Hey everyone, myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs, and I have brought to you some questions that can enhance your general awareness and will prove helpful for your RBI Sebi Nabad examination. Even if, guys, the exam is not near, still you should uh, work up on your current affairs, on your general awareness, because as and when the examination date will be announced, you should be prepared. Then that we know these things, we have covered these things via the videos via the current affairs pdf or spotlight magazine whichever mode you are opting for but my suggestion to all my students is that you should continue watching the daily current affairs videos and covering the current affairs you cannot leave any uh, the current affairs at any point of time if you are a serious aspirant okay this is i'm saying because many students i have seen they have left the preparation of current affairs and thus they have lost the track of things that are going on and you should keep the track of the current affairs you should keep the track of the schemes or the affairs that are going on in india as well as in the international area okay so that was something that i wanted to share of course i know that the viewers who are watching me right now obviously they do follow me but this advice for those of your friends who are not watching the current affairs videos regularly so you can suggest them that watch the videos cover your current affairs on a regular basis if you are a serious aspirant or although you can just skip the memorizing part but you can understand the concepts conceptually so that when the examination date is announced, you will not have to start from the scratch. I hope that you are you all are understanding what I am trying to say. Okay, so on that note, let's begin today's video. Okay, so here we have the first question. Recently, Invest India has been elected as the president of the World Association of Investment Promotion Agencies for 2021 to 2023. The steering committee of WIPA. For 2021 to 23 includes the president, two vice presidents, along with nine regional directors. Which of the following are the vice presidents for 2021 to 2023? Guys, here basically by president we refer to the countries. So which countries are acting as the vice presidents of this organization for 2021 to 2023? So the right answer is Switzerland and Egypt. And from India, the Invest India, that is the government's investment promotion agency, has been elected as the president of this organization. So, country wise, India is the president. And if we have to pinpoint the organization, then it is Invest India. Okay. Now, you don't have to go into the details of the investment promotion agencies of all these countries because this will hamper your preparation. We have to prepare strategically. Okay. So nobody is going to ask you about the investment promotion agencies of these many countries, but you should be aware of the agency from India, which has been appointed as the president or the chief of this agency. So can you guys tell me who is at present the head of Invest India in the comment section below? Okay, so this is your question. Do mention it. Coming back to this, this news. So the steering committee has a president country so president is invest india two vice presidents is egypt and switzerland and nine regional directors which are from brazil south korea finland kuwait costa rica cyprus azerbaijan ghana and samoa okay so these are the nine regional directors of this organization okay so let's have something about WIPA as well. So WIPA, from the name itself, it is the Association of Investment Promotion Agencies of different countries. So in total, it represents 105 countries. Okay, it was established in 1995. Do remember the year. And it works under the UNCTAD. So it is under the ages of UNCTAD, United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. To, and the basic purpose of this organization is to promote the role of investment promotion agencies in attracting investment in their respective countries as the work is being done by Invest India in India. Okay. The next point is that Geneva, Switzerland is the headquarters and UN organizations like UNCTAD, WTO, ILO, UNIDO, that is United Nations Industrial Development Organization, World Bank, International Chamber of Commerce. OECD, International Economic Development Council, all of these organizations are the council members of this association. Okay, clear? 
so that was all that you need to know from wipa from your exam point of view okay which breed of buffaloes has become the first climate resilient breed to be born through the ivf technology so we have bunny surti jafrabadi neeli ravi nagpuri so these are all the buffalo breeds found in india and out of these bunny breed is the right answer so basically the news is that the first calf of this breed has been born by using the ivf technology in vitro fertilization technology i hope that all of you would have an idea of ivf technology but let me tell you in brief so in brief basically the embryo or the eggs and the uh, sperm or whatever is there in animals so that is fertilized in lab and then it is placed into the uh, uterus or in animals it is placed into the female animal and then the offspring is obtained okay so this is how in vitro fertilization works so the first calf of this bunny breed has born out of this ivf technology and the place of the birth of this calf is gir somnath district of gujarat now this breed first of all let's look at the benefits of this breed so this breed is climate resilient therefore it can survive in the water scarcity situation as well and as we know that majority of our cities are going to become water scarce okay so in in light of that situation we need to have the climate resilient livestock in our country so that the livestock men, uh, wealth and farmers income can be assured okay so this will lead to an increase in the livestock wealth of the country if we have more and more climate resilient livestock breeds okay now this was one climate resilient breed and last year the murra breed of buffalo was also uh, born out of ivf basically the uh, calf of murra breed of buffaloes was also born out of the ivf technology in pune okay but the speciality of this bunny breed is that it is climate resilient it can survive in the water scarce situations as well so that is the plus point of this breed and the usp as well okay moving on to the details so these are the extra informations that you can skip very well because this is not important but it was my duty to inform you about the entire news the to cover the news holistically therefore i have provided you with this news okay so this is the name of the farmer where the calf was born and here this statement clearly shows that embryo transfer has a 40% pregnancy rate in animals okay so 15 embryos were trans uh, transferred and out of those transfers only six bunny pregnancies took place and of those one calf was born in gir somnath gujarat okay now the results show the success of ivf technology for multiplication of high yielding climate resilient indigenous breeds of cattle and buffaloes in the country so basically ivf is successful uh, in uh, obtaining the high yielding and climate resilient breeds of cattle so this is nothing but genetically modifying the animal breeds okay next is who has become the first indian to win the j a kushman award for excellence in forum infral research in lifetime achievement category so basically this is re this refers to the micro fossils research okay research on micro fossils forum infral okay who is the first indian who has won this award it is rajiv nigam now for rajiv nigam you need to know that he is the former chief scientist at csir national institute of oceanography do remember this guys and it is located in goa this award is for the year 2022 and it will be given in 2022 only however the recipient has been announced right now okay now the award has been given to him because of his lifetime contribution in the field of fauna minifera research which is a research on micro fossil next is that he has become the first indian citizen to get this award this is the highest award 
given by us based pushman foundation and the award will be given in october next year at the geological so society of americas meeting and the meeting will take place in denver do remember denver colorado colorado us so do remember this as well okay next is where is india's state government owned india's first state government owned wildlife dna analysis laboratory established so the right answer here is nagpur now guys this state owned laboratory is the first in india because prior to this all the wildlife dna laboratories were owned by the central government so we had already the wildlife dna laboratories at dehradun and hyderabad and both of them are owned by the central government this is the first time that state government has established a laboratory for wildlife animal uh, dna testing okay so this will basically help in curbing the poaching and illegal trafficking of the animals so do remember the exact location that is nagpur and regional forensic science laboratory is the premise in which this wildlife dna test laboratory has been established now apart from this the other uh, dna testing laboratories have also been established by the maharashtra government and those two pertain to the po pokso act so basically the fast track dna test units that have been established in the rfsl regional forensic science laboratory in mumbai and pune these will test the dnas of the cases that are registered under the protection of children from sexual offences act okay so this is for the humans now there are five laboratories in the state including nanded and kolhapur okay and all these five have been established under the nirbhaya fund of the central government so do remember these facts next is as for the from pollution to solution report of united nations environment program plastics contribute to at least 85% of total marine waste without urgent action the estimated dash million metric tons of plastic currently entering the ocean annually will triple by 2040 so basically in other words this question can be framed as that what is the amount of uh, plastic waste that enters the ocean annually as per this report so then the answer is 11 million metric tons okay so this much plastic waste is thrown into the oceans every year and this reports this report highlights that this will triple by 2040 so this is a huge threat to the ocean as well as humans uh, ocean environment as well as human environment and health okay so we are going to look into the details of this report however this report does not have much uh, in itself because only the generic things are mentioned in this report like how the plastic is harming the animals how the plastic is also belittling the environment the habitats of the marine animals also uh, it highlights the environmental degradation and the degradation of the ocean coastline areas that is harmful for the humans as well but we humans are the humans we don't understand the impact of these things therefore we continue to litter our surroundings and degrade our environment okay so keep that aside let's move into the details of this report so this report focuses on the impact of marine litter and plastic pollution on the environment and the effects on the health of ecosystem humans and wildlife okay plastic contribute 85% of total marine waste without urgent action this would triple to 2040 and the uh, estimated plastic waste into the oceans would reach to 23 to 37 million metric tons if we do not take any urgent action against this thing okay so these are the facts mentioned in this report apart from this i have already told you that the report inclines towards the generic statements so we do not need to go into that because in phase 1 we know that factual questions are asked next is which company is partnering with the jnk administration for project mumkin so here the right answer is ashok leyland now this project mumkin was launched in 2020 only with the help of or in partnership with ashok leyland 
Now, what is the purpose? The purpose of this project is to provide these small vehicles, small commercial vehicles, to the youth of Jammu and Kashmir. Okay, if they get these vehicles, they will, they can start their employment opportunities. They can basically create employment opportunities for themselves. They can start their own business. They can also uh, work in some kind of log logistics sector or in construction. So basically, in order to create lively good opportunities for the youth the jammu and kashmir administration provides the small commercial work vehicles like mini tempos or uh, vehicles like that to the youth who fall in the age bracket of 22 to 35 years in the uh, jnk area okay jammu and kashmir area i hope that this is clear to you now do remember that only small vehicles are provided to the uh, youth and not the employment is directly provided to them okay so this is the difference here however indirectly this scheme aims to create the employment opportunities for the youth itself by encouraging them to indulge in self business or in uh, doing self uh, self employment engaging in self employment okay now as far as this news is concerned so why are we studying it now so the reason is that recently over 500 small vehicles have been given to the youth under this scheme so that is why it was in the news but launch year is 2020 on only now also do remember this thing that the vehicles that are provided to the youth are at a subsidized rate and the share of subsidy is divided between the jammu kashmir administration and the manufacturer now you don't have to go into the ratios okay because this is not a very large scale project that is running in the union territory of jammu and kashmir very basic project it is and as far as the state or union territory projects are concerned limited knowledge is required from you okay so i hope that you have understood this project mumkin clearly and here this video ends now guys if you liked the content provided by us then do not forget to subscribe the channel and the most important information for you all is that you can get the PDF of this session on the Telegram channel. The link of the Telegram channel is in description below. Thank you so much for watching the video.